I don't know what I'm gonna put in this for the record. I always need places to put things. My craft supplies are just exploding through the dining room. Hi, I'm Katrina and welcome to Moon Valley Makes where I share all of the homemade projects that I love to do, both cooking and baking and also crafting and DIYs. Today we're doing another craft. This is part two of three in my little series where I'm covering things in my house with fabric for various reasons. You don't have to go watch part one to make sense of this video. They're kind of separate things, but they're also a little bit similar. So if you want to go watch part one, it's linked below. So I recommend going and watch that and then come back. <laughs> Today I'm showing you how I covered this old sewing box in fabric. I got this sewing box from my buy nothing group. It came with a bunch of stuff in it so if you want to see the little haul, everything that came in the box and plus there was a bag. It was like so much so much sewing and crafting supplies. There's a little video that shows everything that came in the box and also the bag which is on Instagram and also TikTok. So you can go look for that. It's not far back. I don't post very much. I had two main reasons for wanting to cover this box in fabric. The first is that it's not my style and it's pretty old and crusty and I want to take a, like, give it a new lease on life. And second, similar to in part one where I talked about how I am more likely to use my journal because it's cute and I like the way that it looks and feels, I feel the same way about this. Now I'm loving having this like out in my little dining room <laughs> crafting area because it's just so adorable and it matches things that I like. It matches my style and it's a great way to showcase these vintage fabrics that I was scared to use in other ways that I thought maybe wouldn't get enough use. I'm gonna use this until it falls apart. I'm gonna honor these vintage fabrics for as long, as long as the glue holds, I guess. I guess I can always add more glue. This was a really fun little project. I didn't know how it was gonna go, but I think it turned out absolutely beautifully. So here's how I did it. This box was in rough shape. The vinyl is not my style at all. Also, it's vinyl. The handle is pretty gnarly. So is the hardware and even some of the vinyl is peeling up. The inside wasn't so bad, except this plastic pocket was just kind of gross, but we'll get to that later. First, I wanted to choose the fabric. As I've talked about before, I have this stash of vintage fabric and I chose this selection. I'm a huge fan of pattern mixing and this was just like the perfect project to do it on. So I started just by arranging the fabric in different orders just so I could decide which part of the box would be covered in which fabric. I could have just done it all in one, but I wanted it to be a little bit more interesting and showcase as many of these fabrics as I could without it being too busy. I settled on these fabrics in this orientation and after a quick iron, I moved on to preparing the box for its makeover. I just cleaned it really quickly with some disinfecting wipes. I mostly just wanted to get all the dust from the inside. Now let's talk about this pocket. This pocket was made out of like a, almost like a shower curtain plastic and the elastic was completely stretched out and the texture of it was just really unappealing. I noticed that the backing that it was on was starting to lift a little bit, so I just yanked it out. It took a little bit of cutting and then I was able to get this entire pocket piece out. I wasn't planning on redoing this, but it really needed to be done. And just wait, I'm so glad that I did. It, it was totally worth it. I wanted to make another pocket like this and one of the things that came in this box actually were these random elastics. I don't know what these are for, what they were for originally, but they were the perfect size. So I just clipped off the little plastic hook and they were ready to go. So I don't love how all of the metal parts look on this box, so I'm going to paint them. I don't know if painting is the right thing. I probably is the very wrong thing to do. I probably should use something like rub and buff, but I don't have that and I do have this paint. So I'm going to use what I have. And if it is absolutely awful, I don't know what I'll do. Hopefully it will be fine. Hopefully it will stick. That's kind of the thing I'm I'm most worried about is it sticking and then I'm gonna kind of keep everything moving around as it dries so that it doesn't like dry shut. And I want to do this before I put the fabric on because it'll be a lot easier. If I get some paint like onto this, I don't know what it is, vinyl, then it's not a problem. I don't know if this part is gonna work but I won't know unless I try. <laughs> the other thing that I have that I could use is nail polish. But I think this is a better idea. This is like for crafting. And it says it's glorious gold. <laughs> so how can you go wrong with that? I just have a clean old tower cream lid from the recycling that I'm gonna use as my palette. I 
I immediately regretted not painting it white first, like doing like a priming layer. Um, so I've done two layers of the gold or two coats. That's how you talk about paint. Two coats of the gold. I don't think it really dried enough between the first coat and the second coat. So I'm gonna let that actually dry now. And I'm gonna turn my attention to the pockets that I wanna make for the inside. I think I'm gonna do two pockets since I have those two elastics and why not? The more I can organize things in a cute way, the happier me and my entire family will be. <laughs> I chose this red and blue floral to be the pocket fabric. And first I just glued down a piece just to be like the backing. And then I cut a longer piece to be the pocket. Cause I want to put that elastic across the top. I needed a channel to put the elastic in and I got to use, very exciting, I got to use my bias tape makers, which I've never used before. This was a birthday present to myself as a set of these bias tape makers. And basically you slide the fabric through and it folds it into this perfect like C fold. Then I was able to just fold it in half and iron it again so that the C fold that then became a V fold maybe. Then I tucked the fabric into the V fold, pinned it down, and it was time to sew. I need to use the sewing machine. You can't stay up there because you're sitting on the thread. Also, you're gonna freak out. Okay, goodbye. Okay, let's go. So, there it is. Now I'm gonna thread through these elastics. So I've safety pinned it on one end to the fabric and then there's a safety pin on this end just so I have something to hold on to as I scoot it through. Oh, I think it's gonna fit. Wouldn't that be a bummer if I had done all of that? And it didn't fit. <gasps> oh, it's perfect. <laughs> the safety pin's in there and I scooch it and then hold and then pull from this end. It's a great trick if you get your drawstring lost in your pants. <laughs> okay, so now I'm up to the end of the elastic and we still have this much to go. So it's gonna be like gathered on here, which is what I want. Right, Pete? Okay, <laughs> it's like a little skirt. <laughs> I love the pattern mixing so much. So I stitched the elastic in on the ends and I went like back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I wanted the top pocket to be a little bit bigger. So I took little pleats in the fabric and just glued with a tiny little dot of hot glue before gluing the bottom of the pocket directly to the cardboard. So it could be more of a pocket for like smaller things. There you have it, folks. It's a little lumpy. <laughs> um, and because of how I pleated it, I pleated it much bigger pleats on the first side, not realizing that I wouldn't have enough pleating for the second side. So. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's definitely poofier on this side. I wish I had put fabric inside it because now it's just, you know, I'll do that. Once it's dry, I'll like flip it underneath and put some fabric there. But that's just a little nicer. To attach the fabric to the outside of the box, I decided to start with the top. I trimmed the blue that I wanted to use for the top down so that it just had a little bit of overhang. And then I cut a slit in the middle that I could slide the handle through. The handle has these little gold hinges. Well, now they're gold because I painted them. These little hinges and I wanted the metal part to still show. So I took little snips of fabric and folded them underneath with a little bit of glue so that I could leave just the metal part showing. I ended up using a sewing pin just to kind of tuck it in place so that it could lay flat. There was a little bit of a learning curve on this one, but I did get better as I went along. For the sides of the lid, I decided to use this white fabric with the little yellow flowers. So I cut a strip and then I folded down the top edge and ironed it down so it had a nice crisp clean edge at the top. Okay, I did the first side just to figure out how I was doing it and I learned that I need to be gentler as I iron so that the top edge doesn't get wobbly. I'm also really not happy with like the fact that I have to go around this shape. It's not going to be fun but I learned a little bit about how not to do it. <laughs> At the top here, I made some mistakes. Then I attached the other three sides, making sure to tuck under and glue all of the raw edges so that nothing was gonna stick out and start to fray. Okay, I'm going around the hinges on the back and I think that's a little bit nicer than it was when I went around the handle on the top. It ain't perfect, but that's okay.
tweezers were exceptionally useful at this part. I wish I had thought of that sooner. It was so helpful to basically have little tiny fingers. Then I folded under all of the edges and glued it to the inside of the box because there are hinges in the way. I had to add a little bit of extra fabric at the hinges just so that it looked nice once the box was opened. The glue is kind of acting as a solvent for the paint and it's actually destroyed it in a couple areas. There's like some drips of paint or some like paint being like flaked off by this action. So I don't know how to do something about that. Maybe put some varnish down. <sighs> Should have thought of that earlier. Well, I did think about it and then I forgot. <laughs> Should have done that though. Should have remembered. I'm sick of looking at this glue. So I'm going to put the pockets in. Just kind of make sure I put them in right side up. <laughs> Remember, it used to look like this. Ew. Two, one. Ah, it was stunning. So functional. Okay, let's, oh God. Let's put my little chalk marker in. Ah, so cute. Or it could go in the bottom pocket. Oh, this is a delight. I love it so much. Okay, so the top, oh, whoops, no end. I was like, the top is done. The top is not done because I need to do the handle still. Womp womp. Um, but we're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> I ended up just wrapping this strip of fabric around and I cut a piece that had the selvage so that it didn't have any raw edges showing but I didn't have to do any sort of hemming or glue hemming. And then once I wrapped all the way around there were just these little bits of the handle still showing so I took tiny tiny little squares of fabric and glued them in place so that none of the plastic was showing. Okay so I'm gonna basically do, are you tilting? Okay, so I'm basically gonna do the same technique that I did for this like white and yellow to do the body of the box. See how it has this like cardboard insert? I'm just going to fold, fold and glue like right along the top of the insert. This blue fabric had a lovely blue selvage edge at the bottom. A selvage, if you don't know, is it's like a thicker edge and it won't unravel. So I used that along the bottom and it made this nice little, this nice little detail, I think. <sighs> da, da. <laughs> oh man. Now this looks like a box that you should put your sewing stuff in, you know? I love it this is gonna make me happy every time i look at it and that feels really special <laughs> it's not quite as neat as i wanted it to be but i'm just gonna let that go oh and then lest we forget the inside it's cute little pockets ready to carry things around oops hot glue strings always it's a little bit tighter of a fit because there's fabric and glue on like both sides of where the lid meets the rest of the box. But it's just not as smooth as it was before, but it's not hard. It's not hard to do at all. Just snaps shut. I'm gonna do a little bit of touch up with the gold paint, and then I'm gonna use this varnish over the top of um, everywhere where I painted, and then it will be done. And there it is. I am, I'm obsessed. I really love this so much. It came out so cute. And I love that these vintage fabrics like have this new life on this box and the box itself has a new life. It's just exactly what I wanted it to be. I don't really know what I'm gonna put into it in the future, but I just wanted to see what it looked like with some sewing supplies in it. And it just, it just really hits the spot. It's so cute. I hope you enjoyed watching the little sewing box take on a new life fresh start and I know a lot of the things that I did were very specific to this like one random box that I had but I think that there is some carryover so if you want to cover something in your house in fabric maybe it's just like an old shoe box and you want to practice that would be a great way to, to try it and see if you can give new life to something that otherwise maybe would be trash. If you didn't go and watch part one yet that's linked below and I highly recommend it because it's a cute little project too. Also using vintage fabric and come back next week for part three where I'll do the third and final installment of this project, at least for now. I'm sure I'll be covering more things in fabric at some point in my life, probably sooner rather than later, because I do like doing it. It is effective. And if you're watching this in the future, then I will have already put part three linked below as well. I really appreciate you being here and watching. If you want to show a little bit of extra support beyond just being here, which is honestly just 
so meaningful. The fact that you're even watching this is like wild. I'm so glad you're here. But to add a little bit of extra support, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, you can find me on Instagram or TikTok, and you can subscribe to my newsletter. Everything is linked below. It's really turning into a mouthful of things. Either way, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you again for being here, and I'll see you in part three. I'll see you next week. Bye. Rachel? Oh, approved. Is it a good idea? Yeah?